so this is the first interv interview about this entrepreneur stuff in music and here I am with my friend one of the fastest men alive guitarist guitar man for a mob adrenaline mob nocturnal and sonic stomp Mike Orlando it's a pleasure to have you here man pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, what was your beginning in music uh, what what do you do to start playing guitar I mean I started since I was eight or nine years old just you know took my dad's guitar from him stole it and started playing and just knew that's what I wanted to do and geez by uh, I'd say 13 years old I had a band already and so it was a clear you know, clear choice of what I wanted to do really early on yeah. uh, and uh, was do you, do you learn from yourself? Do you have, go to some guitar school? It was both. I, you know, I started off with lessons and, um, you know, I went through maybe only about three teachers. You know, kind of, awesome. you learn from someone and then you kind of, you know, surpass and then you know when to move on. Oh, cool. And, you know, on to the next person, did classical training for a while. And then, you know, basically the last one was getting me really into playing and scales and stuff and then you know you know the point when when you you know it's time to move on and i felt i was learning more on my own with my own ear awesome. and my own you know own just self sitting there and learning stuff so you know i stopped the lessons at that point cool so what kind of uh difficult do you find to the instrument uh playing guitar what kind of uh so this is a barrier i have to pass through this one Oh, practice, practice, practice. The, you know, you can't, I try, I don't, I try to never see barriers. Mm. I just kind of just always try and move forward, even if it's the simplest little lick. And it, it took me a week to get that lick down. You know, the next week I was onto something else. So it's mm. always just awesome. this constant pushing yourself at every level. A any musician, I feel you should be constantly working at your craft and, uh, you repetitions know, yeah repetitions. you know if you're an artist that puts out material and you and you're fortunate enough to do albums always try the next one always try to do something better and or just something a little different if you're a guitarist and you know I always try and up myself a little bit because it's just something inside of me that I want to keep you know progressing and keep you know building my own repertoire on the guitar awesome so uh you start really young, but when it was your first job with music? Yeah, uh, you know, th it was always, you know, the bands playing in the clubs and, you know, it, we would make money, but it wouldn't be on a big scale. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I would say I seriously just, you know, got really into it in uh, early 2000s, started working on the 2000s mm -hmm. and uh, you know realized all right I got to do something different here and you know a friend of mine was like man just do it yourself go your own route mm. and stop worrying and going from band to band being a guitar player was it was cool because I can go into instrumental music and guitar mm -hmm. music and that's where Sonic Stomp came in and started working with that and uh, once I did that album and, and released it in uh, maybe 2005 I would say, I think. So um, you never worked as a sideman for a band. You have always been. To I've had your bands. Stuff. You know, I had a lot of bands, as we all have. But you know, I basically once I got into the business, you know, really was with Sonic Stomp and, and doing it seriously, and started touring and doing clinic tours across, you know, across the globe, and mm -hmm. going to China and Japan and Germany and doing all the trade shows, and then clinic tours from the trade shows in each of those countries so uh, yeah that, that's when it really kicked in so you made your name uh, about your instrumental music you made your name as a solo guitarist yeah and uh, uh, what do you, what can you say about the steps what was the steps of oh, uh, composing recording uh, how do you distribute what, what was mm -hmm. your, your first release you know, my first release was by myself. I, I did it awesome. myself. I, I took my own money and put it, invested in me, you know, because that's how serious I was about it. So it was, you know, I've always had a recording studio since I'm very young. So I, I was fortunate enough to be able to record my own 
music since you know I'm a teenager oh, awesome. in some small capacity and now my studio is a lot bigger and uh, obviously I do all of the albums that I release in it now but so I was able to do the album and then basically just be able to pay for uh, you know 2,000 CDs and I would invest the money, uh, you know, uh, maybe two grand or something you invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you sell that, you could make 20 grand because you're selling a CD for $10. This is really important. So you're investing in yourself. And that really started me and that got me going. And I was really hardcore about it. I would, I would have people work with me and send it all over the world and get reviews in different places you, and magazines. You, by yourself, you search for the guys. Yeah, yeah, I, I was this very really determined, important. you know, very determined. Um, had friends that would help me and give me, you know, ideas. And yeah, in the business, obviously, I have a lot of friends in the business. Yeah, That's work like, is everything. Hey, for man, us. I did this. Okay, well, cool. I'm going to send my CDs to this magazine and this and here and here. And, and it just and it just blossomed like that. Keep the network real close for you and make them work for you. You made your network work for you. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it was basically just mailing out tons of stuff and, and, and releasing it or, you know, I did a, uh, I would do a video of myself, put it on YouTube, you know, there's the views would start coming in and stuff like that. And that Great. was a big thing. And then you send that to a lot of different places. It is a constant marketing. Always. And, uh, you said that you put some money on yourself. Where this money came from? Oh, it's just, I've always owned my own private business so outside of music so I, i've i've always been an independently you know working person worked for myself make you know so uh, i was fortunate in that aspect so yeah it was a matter of you know just putting uh putting some of the money you earned that month down and mm -hmm. and invested in yourself instead of going by you know a ton of gear <laughs> so. So this is important because Mike always been in music, but he has a, another uh, uh, way to do money too. So he, for the for the beginning when he was investing in himself, uh, he, he was not counting on mu uh, music money only. You yeah. were counting on another another uh, sure. source yeah. of money, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, just keep building. And now it's obviously 100 percent about music. music. This yeah. is awesome because a lot of musicians have this kind of uh, barrier that they don't want to do another thing besides music. Yeah. This is kind of, <laughs> wow, so you need someone to put money on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you have, you know, a, a expensive tastes and wanting to drive Corvettes and all these fancy things and wanting to buy equipment and recording stuff. And I always wanted to do that. So I was always a hard worker from day one, always. You know, hey, if I want this, I go out and make the money, I get it. And, um, but it became, okay, now I need to put the money into me, not material things. Cool. And you were talking about production stuff. You, you recorded yourself. Where did you learn that? On the internet? Yeah, uh, no, I learned it uh, when I was very, uh, I, don't, I don't know, about 18, 19, 20. I joined a band uh, and they, the band had a full recording studio. So I was very fortunate, hands-on, you know, training. I would watch them every day. I would sit by the board and, uh, you know, the, the owner of the studio, the funny thing is, became my brother-in-law. Oh. <laughs> so he ended up marrying my sister, but he is the one, um, you know, Ronnie Angel, that really taught me, I would just watch him all the time. And that, that was it. Once that bug set in, you know, recording came just as important as guitar playing to me. Well, I, I, sure. I love production and mixing, and now I do it for a living. So, you know, it was real. Uh, oh, so this is important. Uh, you are not making um, money with music playing guitar. You're oh. making money with all kinds of music, recording yeah. at your studio, mixing some stuff, yeah. editing some stuff. Well, it's, it's everything, obviously. The, it, yeah, there is a lot of guitar. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of... of you that is a big part of my you business You are of now. the uh, 100 uh, best guitar man in the world, and this <laughs> is official. I'm not talking <laughs> shit. This is official. Uh, so you know, stuff like that is is is, is nice to see, and it's mm -hmm. all cool. So, but to me, it's it's just more about the music and, and doing what I do. But this is important because a lot of musicians have these uh, feelings that they are only making uh, money 
playing or do you only make money uh, in the concerts and it's not about that when you are yeah. in the music business when you are in this world in this market yeah. you have lot of uh, lots of ways to do yeah. in, to do this yeah this i mean of. myself it's adrenaline mob it's sonic stomp it's touring with adrenaline mob and sonic stomp and making money like that so yeah that's all from playing guitar but the other side of the coin and there always is one is my sonic stomp studios where i not only have I engineered, mixed, and mastered pretty much every album I've ever been on and put out. Uh, I've, I've, I've mixed and mastered, engineered the, the last uh, three Adrenaline Mob albums and engineered and recorded the first one as well, all at Sonic Stomp Studios. The first two Sonic Stomp albums are done there. Um, and I do a lot of production with a lot of different people. Uh, John Moyer from Disturbed is one of my uh, you know partners where we he brings me bands and I engineer mix and do their whole albums and he's an amazing producer great uh, work with Chad's league here as well now on uh, from breaking Benjamin mm -hmm. former breaking Benjamin uh, drummer and he's bringing bands as well so it's just a constant you know wheels in motion if I'm yeah wheels in motion if <laughs> I'm not touring and I'm not playing guitar I'm behind a console mixing so this is amazing because uh, we're, what we're trying here is to teach the young musicians yeah. that it's not all about fame and spotlights. Yeah. You have your background to make money, to invest in yourself and be in the spotlight. Without a doubt. Spotlight's great. You know, we all love oh, yeah, it. We love that. Yeah, <laughs> we are great. here because of the spotlight too. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> you know, I, I adore getting on stage. It's the greatest thing when I'm on it. You know, I have oh, smiles from ear to ear yes, and, yes. and I'll do it for as long as I can stand. But I also will be behind a mixer as well, as long as I can hear. <laughs> Great, Mike. Yeah. And what about, uh, what do you say that is your biggest achievement in music life and what do you want to do to get, get um, bigger? I don't look at it like what was the pinnacle because mm -hmm. there were so many incredible moments, whether it's, you know, stepping on stage at Rock and Rio with you wow. to tens and tens of thousands of people and seas of things or you know just killing it with adrenaline mob and you know all the tours we've done that there's just too many highlights you know sonic stomp you know some of my last tours in china were there were uh, you know i was pulling in thousands of people and the, the sense of accomplishment was like wow this is just guitar you know they're they're coming to just see guitar, so that's a really cool And you had endorsers to do that, right? Yeah, you I worked China, very closely. Yeah. You were in China with the, this relationship of your brands. Oh, but it was, yeah, it was all there with GHS Strings, Rocktron Products, which are huge endorsers of mine that I love. I love those guys. And yeah, they started me doing all that stuff. So there's not one high point, and, mm -hmm. and there, there isn't anything that I would want to achieve i just want to keep going you know awesome. whether it's coming off of the last uh, adrenaline mob tour with avenge sevenfold getting to do arenas with them mm -hmm. i mean that was incredible you know this they're just all great moments i just you know hope to keep going and uh and have great moments all the time you know cool yeah mike it was a pleasure yeah man Thank you so much for all the information. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we have a lot of insights of how to make money in music and not only be the guitar hero. You're not only the guitar hero, you have to learn how to be the guitar hero and pay to be the guitar hero. You have to pay <laughs> your bills too. So thank oh you yeah. again, Mike. Hell it was yeah. a, a pleasure. Yeah, man. You're awesome. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Bom, então a gente acabou de ver a entrevista com o Mike Orlando. E deu pra gente sacar algumas coisas muito legais, que por exemplo, é, ele tinha uma outra fonte de renda, mesmo já sendo um guitarrista que tinha um mínimo de expressividade, ele tinha uma outra fonte de renda que ele começou a botar dinheiro daquela outra fonte de renda nele mesmo. Então, é, se você não tem um investidor, um cara que, um pai, que vai te dar a grana para você investir na sua música, se você tá fazendo música autoral, que é o caso do Mike Orlando, que era música autoral instrumental, ele pe... em vez de você dele tirar o dinheiro de outra pessoa, ele tinha o dinheiro de ele mesmo, que ele ganhava de... com outra forma de renda, para investir nele na música. Então ele já tinha, se... já tinha aprendido a se gravar também, de estar tá no mercado, não em escolas, para você ver como o estudo é importante, mas a ação é mais importante do que você tá simplesmente estudando. Então você vê que ele é um cara workaholic, 
ele é um cara que trabalhou, que estuda, que é, é dedicado, não é um cara preguiçoso, que fica esperando alguém fazer por ele. Ele fez tudo por ele mesmo, ele, ele que fez a primeira distribuição do negócio dele, ele que fez a primeira distribuição do trabalho dele, que é o produto dele, que era o primeiro disco do Sonic Stomp. Então isso foi no começo dos anos 2000, ali, entre 90 e poucos 2000, você vê que era a realidade do mercado americano sem internet. Então, é, não, não existe aquela magia de tipo, ah, eu tô nos Estados Unidos, é mais fácil. Não é mais fácil, velho. Você vai ter que trabalhar tanto quanto. Você tá falando com um dos 100 guitarristas considerados referências mundiais da guitarra. E o cara tinha um outro trabalho. O cara não só vive da guitarra, ele falou, guitarra é, nos shows e o Sonic Stomp e, os, e as vendas de disco são o, o grosso do trabalho dele, mas ele tem um estúdio que ele mixa outras bandas, que ele produz outras bandas, que quem traz para ele esses trabalhos também é o cara do Disturbed, é o cara que era o batera do Breaking Benjamin. Então você vê que são grandes nomes que vivem da música, não só de serem Guitar Heroes. A gente não tá falando de um Slash, que é um ponto destacado na curva, que por N motivos, conseguiu viver simplesmente de ser um artistão de, da guitarra. A gente tá falando dos melhores guitarristas do mundo vivendo de música. Tá? Então, é, acho que esses insights são muito importantes pra gente que tá no mercado musical galgando cada vez um, um caminho mais alto. O Mike, no caso do Mike, ele tinha um outro trabalho que era fora da música. Ele tinha uma fonte de renda que não era relacionada à música, que ele investia na música própria dele. Mas você, se você realmente é um cara que tá afim de tocar e aprender, ter mais palco, você pode fazer isso fazendo eventos, baile, casamento, alguma coisa que não seja relacionada à música própria, e pegar esse dinheiro e investir na sua música própria. E vai galgando aos pouquinhos. Você vê que ele fazia o network dele, dos amigos deles trabalhar, dos amigos dele, trabalhar para ele, para distribuir o projeto dele. Ele falava para os amigos, porra, me ajuda aí, distribui aqui, divulga aqui, leva para tal cara e tal. Então, você vê que o caminho de todos é o mesmo. A insistência, o trabalho duro e você ter uma gestão disso aí correta, não, não, não fazer de forma jogada, vai fazer você percorrer caminhos melhores.